Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my official NFL week number three picks and predictions where I go through every single NFL game and give my prediction beginning with the Thursday night game. It is the New York Jets sitting minus six and a half taken on the Patriots. The Patriots have been relatively competitive with Jacoby Brissett the first two weeks. You do have the Jets. I think the Jets had two tough games week one and week two. Now Aaron Rodgers coming to MetLife. They're six and a half point favorites. I think this is their coming out party. I think Garrett Wilson goes over 100 yards with a touchdown and the Jets win on prime time, and they cover that six and a half point spread against the Patriot team. Let's be honest, we're just waiting for them to start Drake May. It's probably going to happen in week five or week six. Right now, they haven't been terrible, but they did lose last week to the Seahawks. I do think they're not going to be all that competitive against the Jets. Jets win this game. Aaron Rodgers, maybe three passing touchdowns. It's his first big game in a New York Jets uniform. Moving out to the one o'clock window, you do have the Giants sitting at 0-2. So the Giants potentially looking at getting a top two, a top three overall draft pick. It's definitely time for them to move on from Daniel Jones at this point. You do have the Cleveland Browns coming off a galvanized defensive type win against the Jaguars. They do have one of the best defenses, if not the best defense in the NFL. Deshaun Watson, once again, did not look good. He had like, what is it, 32 pass attempts under 200 yards. It's just not efficient. The Browns, though, are sitting minus six and a half, and this is a game where the Browns defense is, they're going to feast on the Giants at home. I do think the Browns hold the Giants possibly under 10 points. They win this game. They cover the six and a half point spread 20 to nine. They still do have offensive problems, but the Giants at this point, we're looking at three, maybe four wins again, very likely to finish with a top five pick and be drafting a quarterback. So the Browns with their defense at home, I do trust them to cover that six and a half point spread and just straight up shut down the Giants offense, even with Malik Neighbors. If you are a Giants fan, at least you do have some optimism. You've got Neighbors. That's a legit number one receiver to build around for the future, especially if you are drafting a quarterback. But the Browns defense is just way, way too much at home in this spot. Next, we do have the Green Bay Packers traveling on the road to take on the Titans in Nashville. Tennessee sitting at 0-2, although it is a very competitive 0-2. They've lost a few close games. They are minus three. You do have the Packers coming off a home win against the Indianapolis Colts. It was a heavy, heavy, heavy dose of Josh Jacobs, like 32 carries. I'm not sure they're going to be able to replicate that on the road. Will Levis has not looked very good. This is like his rendition to potentially be a franchise quarterback. We will see. I do think in a spot here with the Packers traveling on the road, they're not going to be able to run the ball nearly as well as they did against Indianapolis. And even in that game, it wasn't like they scored a whole lot. It was just a beautiful game game script for them with Malik Willis. He's going to have to throw in this game traveling, and I don't see it working out. I do like the Tennessee Titans, just law of averages. They're not an 0-3 team. This is a team that's at least going to win, you'd think, seven games. So I think they're going to win this game. They're going to cover the three-point spread. Will Levis, they possibly do it. Maybe Levis gets a few rushing touchdowns close to the goal line. And they win this game 24 to 14. The next one o'clock game, it is the Chicago Bears traveling to Indianapolis. So you've got another one and one team traveling to an 0 and 2 team. Indianapolis with Anthony Richardson looked really, really shaky week two in Lambeau. Week one was a lot better. I feel like Anthony Richardson, even though he's only started like six games, his home stats are way better than road stats. So this is a situation where it's two very young quarterbacks. Anthony Richardson technically isn't a rookie, but he barely played in year one. So this is like basically rookie versus rookie with Caleb Williams. We know Caleb Williams has been struggling his first two games. He does have a really good receiver core. And I do think this is just a learning curve. Caleb Williams is going to be a good quarterback. Will he be a superstar Probably not, but I do think he's going to be a franchise QB, especially his dual threat ability, his ability to run the ball. He could still develop into a superstar. I mean, this is just, it's very hard to play the quarterback position in the NFL, especially as someone getting thrust into it their first year, their rookie year. Remember, Mahomes didn't even start until the last game of his rookie season. It's just very hard for these rookies to make the transition. I do think this is a situation where you can see Indianapolis sitting minus two. I've got them winning by a field goal. I don't think they fall to 0-3. They're a competitive enough team to be to Caleb Williams, the rookie, possibly with a walk-off field goal or something like that. Next, you do have the Houston Texans traveling to the Minnesota Vikings, a battle of the undefeateds, 2-0 versus 2-0. C.J. Strout taking on Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold having a potential breakout year. You do have Houston sitting three-point road favorites. ESPN FPI gives Houston a 55% chance to win. And I really can't get a great gauge on this game. So I do have it relatively higher scoring, but I am going to go with the push in terms of 
the betting. I have Houston winning this game by three. They are favorited by three. But with the Vikings, it's hard to really predict their games right now. Like, I don't know how much of this is, oh, Sam Darnold is actually an elite quarterback, and maybe this is just early in the season. He's playing really well, and it's all going to fall off. They do have a really good receiving core, so I do think Darnold's probably going to be able to keep this up for the most part. But in this situation, Houston is just overall more talented. They're the more complete team. They go on the road, and they win this game by a field goal, and I would say to take the over in that one. The next one o'clock game, it is the Philadelphia Eagles traveling to take on the Saints. I believe the Saints right now are sitting minus two. The Eagles last night were minus one. They were one-point favorites. But then they lost that game inexplicably. Saquon Barkley dropping that third and three. Little short pass. He could he probably could have went into the end zone. They would have covered the spread. They probably would have won that game by 10 points. They end up losing it on a last second touchdown to Atlanta. And now they're one and one. And they're traveling to the Superdome to take on a Saints team. They've scored like 40 points in both of their games. New Orleans with a 51% chance to win this game. I do think the road team... The Philadelphia Eagles, I know A.J. Brown, he was out the past game. I think they get it done on the road against New Orleans. There's no way New Orleans can keep this up, let's be honest. This is a Derek Carr-led offense. He's a decent quarterback. He's not an MVP. And right now, he's playing like the league MVP. He's going to come back down to earth. I do think Philadelphia goes on the road, wins this game. They are, I believe, one or two point underdogs at this point with the live betting updating. The next game we do have... It is the Chargers traveling to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. Both of these kind of defensive-minded teams sitting at 2-0. Pittsburgh, two-point favorites. It is basically a pure pick when you look at the overall analytics. They've almost got the game ending in a tie because these teams are so even. But I will be taking the road team to win this game. I like the over 36 in this one. Normally, when everyone says it's going to be a really low-scoring game, it always goes over. So I will be taking the Chargers to win this game by one point. They're very evenly matched, but let's be honest, Justin Herbert, he's a lot better thrower of the football than Justin Fields. Although you could say Justin Fields kind of fits this Pittsburgh offense perfectly to where it's all short passes. There's a few intermediates. And and it's not like Justin Fields is a horrible thrower of the football. He just has to control the ball, not turn it over. You've got a great defense, rely on it. And also, obviously, the biggest thing with Justin Fields, his running ability. So maybe Justin Fields... He can lead lead the Steelers to 10 or 11 wins by taking care of the football and using that dual threat ability. But I just think Herbert is so much better than Fields that he will be able to carry that uh, offense over. And also, how about J.K. Dobbins? Back-to-back games, 130 rushing yards. He looks great coming off multiple injuries. And I do think the Chargers win this game, possibly another very close game on a last-second field goal. Next, you do have an AFC-NFC. You've got the Buccaneers taking on the Broncos, kind of a rare game with Denver traveling to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay sitting at 2-0, the Broncos at 0-2. It's very hard to have any faith in the Broncos at this point. Bo Nix has been horrible, and it's another rookie. I mean, he's a rookie. It's very hard to adjust, but he has been terrible his first two games. You do have Tampa Bay. They've been amazing. I mean, they've easily covered both spread. They go on the road to Ford Field, Detroit. They win that game outright. They looked good. They're sitting six and a half point favorites. Baker Mayfield had a solid year last year. He's carrying it over. And this is going to be one of those games because it's the NFL. Denver's probably going to win it outright, but I just can't predict it just because it's so hard to have any faith in that Broncos offense right now with how bad Bo Nix is playing. I'm sure he'll get better as the season goes on, but it is really brutal. So give me the Bucks to win again. They win this game 24 to 13. They easily cover that six and a half point spread there. Moving out to the four o'clock window. So it is nice. There is five four o'clock games. I don't know why the NFL does to where they stagger it. There's like 10 one o'clock games and then only three four o'clock games. But this this week is pretty nice. You do have Carolina traveling on the road to take on the Raiders. Yeah, we, Carolina did bench Bryce Young, which probably improves their chances of winning, honestly, with Andy Dalton, the veteran. You've got uh, Las Vegas sitting minus five and a half. They got that crazy upset, nine and a half point underdogs on the road in Baltimore. They win that game outright. And now this is their first home game at Allegiant Stadium with Gardner Minshew. I think they win this game. They cover the spread 26 to 13. I have no faith in Carolina, even with Andy Dalton. And they've got this narrative, a little bit of a different offense. Deontay Johnson now with Dalton, Adam Thielen, but I don't know. I just can't trust them. I will take the Raiders to win this game. They did look good in Baltimore. 
And I don't think the Raiders are a terrible team. They're kind of in the purgatory where they're going to be like 7-10 and 10 again, and they're not going to be able to draft a franchise QB. I think they win this game easily. Next, we do have Seattle hosting Miami. So the big story here with Miami, to Tonga Vailoa, obviously not going to be there. You do have Skylar Thompson likely filling in. But I don't think Thompson, especially at this point, he's gotten some experience, is necessarily that horrible. Seattle is sitting minus five and a half. It's a hard game to gauge because of the backup QB situation. The Seahawks, on the other hand, they ended up not covering the spread against New England on the road. They won that game, and now they're 2-0. and And I do think they win this game, but I do like Miami, even with the backup quarterback. It's hard to predict these games whenever there's a backup QB, but I do think they cover this game barely. They lose 24 to 20 moving on to the prime 425 game it is the 0 and 2 Baltimore Ravens traveling to take on the Cowboys the Cowboys getting crushed at home last week to the Saints they've got another home game they will be taking on the Ravens and Baltimore is sitting one point favorites it feels like everyone's picking Baltimore because it's like impossible for the Ravens to fall to 0 and 3 But I do have Dallas winning this game. Dak Prescott, that offense, C.D. Lamb, they're going to do enough. They got embarrassed last week. Baltimore, it's just a tough start to the season for them. I mean, they needed to to beat the Raiders. That's a game, your nine-point favorites. Now you're going on the road against a tough opponent. who had. Dallas does have a good defense. I know they were horrible against the Saints, but they will bounce back. And I have them winning this game in a relatively higher scoring matchup. Maybe the defense really doesn't bounce back, but I think Dallas wins. Dak Prescott normally plays really well at Jerry World. The next 425 game, it is the 49ers traveling to take on the Rams. The 49ers sitting at 1-1 one and one coming off that loss to the Vikings. The Rams are low-key, kind of a tank candidate. I mean, what are they going to do? With their current situation with Matt Stafford getting older, seems like Cooper Cup gets injured every year. Puka Nakua is on the IR right now. They're 0-2. They just got crushed by a division rival on the road. The Cardinals, now they're coming back home. They're taking on San Francisco, sitting at 7.5 point favorites. I think San Francisco wins this game and covers the spread 24-13. They win this game by 11 points. They still are a really good team. Brock Purdy's a solid quarterback. I understand Christian McCaffrey's going to be out the next few games, but I still think they win. The Rams are completely banged up at this point, and it does seem like they could potentially be like a 3-14 and team, honestly. Maybe they'll be better than that, but they might be one of those teams that's looking for a quarterback at the top of the draft, considering how old Matt Stafford is and the amount of injuries that they currently are dealing with, along with the fact that they have not looked good so far this season. We've got another 425 game. This is a fun matchup. It is the Lions traveling to Arizona to take on the Cardinals. Both of these teams sitting at 1-1. One and one. Detroit minus 3. Very, very close matchup according to analytics. Detroit given a 49.9% chance to win. The Cardinals are at like 49.1 or something. And then the other percent is like a tie, up, uh, like a 1% chance of a tie. So these are very evenly matched teams. I do think Detroit goes on the road in a very high scoring game. We saw what happened. Kyler Murray with Marvin Harrison Jr. He is a stud. He is already a number one receiver in the NFL, but this is still a good Detroit team. I don't know if they cover that three point spread, but I do like the over and I think they win. It's a bounce back performance after losing last week to the Buccaneers in a game where they were about seven point favorites. They lost that game relatively easily. They come back. They win this game against the Cardinals team. They've got a lot of hype, especially after that last performance against the 49ers. It's going to be a fun, high-scoring game there. Moving on to the 8-20 Sunday night game. Here's a rare matchup. It is the Chiefs traveling to Atlanta in an AFC-NFC 2-0 versus 1-1. The Chiefs coming back, beating the Bengals. I had the Bengals winning that game outright. But honestly, at least, you know, I said they they were going to cover that six-point spread. They should have won that game. At least they covered it. Now you have the Chiefs sitting minus four and a half, given a 58% chance to win. And I do have the Chiefs just barely winning this game. But I do like the value on Kirk Cousins and the Falcons coming off that Monday night win. How about the Falcons Monday night game and then a Sunday night game? To be fair, that Monday night game was a, a lot of luck. They very easily could have lost that game, potentially by 10 points. They end up winning it, though. And I do like them everyone's going to be amped up. This is a huge home. This is the this is Atlanta's biggest home game in years for sure, taking on Patrick Mahomes in a season where you've got Drake London, you've got Kyle Pitts, you've got B. John Robinson. Now you've got a decent quarterback. They will keep this game close. They will cover that four and a half point spread. Moving on to the Monday night football double header. There's two games. They stagger them. The 730 game is the Jaguars sitting at 0-2 traveling to take on 
the Bills. If you look at the Bills schedule, it's very challenging. Like the next three games after this, I believe the Bills are all on the road against tough opponents or relatively tough teams. This week, though, they are at home. They're taking on the Jaguars. The Jaguars desperately need this win. This is just a tough situation. I mean, the Jaguars did not look good against the Browns. They're going on the road. We know the raucous environment. I will take Josh Allen to win this game and barely cover that five and a half point spread, 26 to 20. They improved to three and oh, this could be Josh Allen's MVP year with the narrative surrounding that team losing Stefan Diggs. And it's really just Allen and James Cook. Another thing, the Jaguars really have not been able to run the ball at all their first two games. That's going to be tough now going on the road without any type of rushing attack. Maybe they'll be able to find it in Buffalo but give me the Bills to win that game and cover. And then the second Monday night game, this is the 8-15 game. It is Cincinnati hosting the Commanders. The the Washington Commanders getting the win this past week. Jaden Daniels' first win. The Bengals sitting at 0-2. We all know, I mean, everyone's going to be picking the Bengals to win this game. The Commanders, even though they won against the Giants, they did not look very good. They did not score a single touchdown. And I do like Cincinnati to win this game and to cover that 7.5 point spread. They cannot fall to 0-3, and they've got a relatively easy matchup to where they should win this game. They very easily could have won in Week 1. They had a few things go against them at home against the Patriots, and then Week 2 against Mahomes in Arrowhead. That's going to be a very tough game, and they were really competitive. But this matchup, they win, and they cover that 7.5-point spread. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.